Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have a new flight controller stack and it's called the Sky Stars mini stack. This is a 20 by 20 stack for $50. And what you get here is the 4-in-1 ESC F4 flight controller with OSD and as well as a 100 milliwatt VTX which is a pretty great deal for a 20 by 20 stack. However, this type of 20 by 20 stacks will not be going into like three inch builds, more towards anything that's gonna be running 11XX type motors. So keep that in mind because it's just a 15 amp ESC. So for example, like 90 millimeter quadcopters, but anything above that, you'll probably be pushing it. So like I mentioned, uh, you can do 3 inch, but I think 11XX motors, anything above that will be overkill. Alright, so this is what we're left with, is these th three components. We have the 4-in-1 ESC, the F4 flight controller, and the VTX, which also supports smart audio, which is something pretty cool, and uh, for something this price is, is really great to have on board. You also get this little goodie bag, it comes with the connector to connect the flight controller to the ESC, however, connecting the VTX to the flight controller will need some soldering, so it won't be a simple, straightforward process if you're new to this. Now it does come with everything you need from the battery wires here to the XT30 connector and some extra screws here. So that's really nice that they provide everything for you in this package. And obviously they also give you the standoffs. Now let's start with the ESC here. Now this is a D-Shot ESC, D-Shot 600 ESC. It's a BL Heli S ESC, so it's not the latest and greatest BL Heli 32. That doesn't mean it's bad. Um, it just means it just won't run D-Shot 1200 and some of the telemetry features. However, I never really use those, so it doesn't really matter that much as long as the ESC is performing well. And these types of ESCs usually end up performing well if used in the correct application that they're meant for. And the way this is supposed to be connected into your quadcopter would be like this, with the battery leads going in the back, motor one, which is always on the bottom right, motor two, motor three, and then motor four. And it's pretty well labeled, oh sorry, one, two, three, four. So yeah, it's correct beta flight orientation here. So out of the box, if you set it up like this, you're gonna be good to go. And that would be the front of your quadcopter. Now the flight controller here is, all right, so now for the flight controller, it's really, really tiny actually. And it's really cool to see it this tiny and have everything on board. So back here we have the F4 microcontroller unit. We do have our OSD right here. And uh, if we flip it over, we have our USB now. The way that it's supposed to be installed in your quadcopter is like this. And the way to know that is usually by the arrow and there's an arrow right in the front there that hopefully you can see that right there. And the USB again will be on the left. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of its connections here and what can we do with it. Now, what's really nice about this with the connector, we already finished the signals for the motors. So what you would need to do next would be to install your VTX camera and your receiver. All right, so if we start from the top here, this is really nicely well labeled and the way they've set up the top so far looks pretty great. So here up on the left will go the camera and on the right will go the VTX. Now for the camera, they're giving you a couple options. So here we have the ground from the camera, which is the black wire. Then you can choose, be careful, you can choose between BAT, which is battery voltage. So if you're running a 3S LiPo, that would output 3S uh, battery voltage to your camera. Or if you want, you can use 5 volt. I highly recommend you use 5 volt. So for the red wire, I would give it 5 volt. And then V is where the yellow line would come in from your camera. And that would be set up right there. Now for the VTX, they really thought this through because here what we have is positive and negative. All right, so taking a closer look because it's really far away from me, you have these pads here. And as you can tell, this side is bridged, which means the positive and the negative here are actually going to be five volts. And if you wanted battery voltage, you would have to remove this bridge and bridge, there's gonna be three pads here and bridge the middle one with this pad right here and you should have battery voltage for the VTX. Currently it's set to five volts. So take note of uh, what, what is this set to when you receive yours, if it's even set. Because if there is no solder here, when you connect your VTX, you're gonna find that it doesn't power up and you might think it's broken. So keep that in mind, that's very important here. Uh, so we have the positive and negative, which is five volt as it's uh, set up right here. T3, now you might think, okay, maybe I'll put my video wire here, but you're wrong. You would put the smart audio. And smart audio is to basically control what channel and the output power through your OSD menu instead of having to come to the VTX and press the buttons. So it's set up on UART3. So keep that in mind also. And then V is the video output that's going, the yellow wire that'll be going to your VTX. Uh, this is very useful information. Even if you're not gonna be using it, you would be able to set up any VTX you want here. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to the right side. Now here we have R1 and T1, which is UART1. Now, if you don't know what a UART, just consider them as like USB ports. So if you used one of the, uh, 
USBs. So for each USB port or UART port, you'll have an R and a T, receive and transmit. And if you use one of them, that's it. You can't use the other one unless it's for the same thing. And, um, you know, this is out of the scope of this review, but maybe I'll do a video, a separate video on that if you don't know what that is. PPM, I think. Yep. Now here we have PM, which could be PPM, but I'll double check that. 3.3 volts R6, which is UART6 receive. And I, I am guessing you might want to put your S bus signal here, but I could be wrong. So you would, if you had S bus, I think you would put it here. I'll double check that now. Um, and if you had I bus, you would want to put it on R1. This is my current theory. I'll double check that in a bit. So, and if you wanted to power up your receiver here, which is really important, I would give it five volt in ground. And depending if it's I bus or S bus, because S bus needs an inverted pad because this is an F4. So I think S bus would go to the R6. So UR6 would be the serial uh, uh, RX for the S bus. And I bus, I would probably put my signal on R1. Make sure you always put those receivers on R pads because receiving, because you are sending data to this thing to control it. And then on the bottom here, we have the buzzer pads. It's very important you put them here because this is what enables and disables the buzzer. Um, and on the bottom, we have the LED pads also. So if you order to install LEDs, that's really cool. They even left that amount of space for you to do such thing. You have the five volt, you have the LED, which is the signal pad. Uh, what controls the LED and then you have the ground here and that's about it here I mean it's really simple and uh, very basic and it has just about everything you're gonna need for a little tiny micro and here's a little boo button and this is used for if you were to accidentally break it or like you're flashing it and then the USB disconnected or the electricity went out sometimes they can just get stuck and then you'd want to hold that and then plug in your USB and then uh, reflash that thing again and if we bring in the VTX here, now they're stating it goes up to a hundred milliwatts and it is selectable, which is really nice that it does hundred milliwatts. Now this is theoretical hundred milliwatts. We really don't know how much it broadcasts and it does use an IPEX port and they do provide you with the antenna. So you're not going to have to get your own here, which is a really nice addition. And up here we have three LEDs that will, I think, dictate what channel we're on, how much we're broadcasting, and all these types of things. And the button to change is right here. But it's really recommended to use smart audio since this thing is smart audio capable. And that's the whole idea here. So you don't have to come press this and try to figure out what, what LED means what and then skip a channel and then have to redo everything. So uh, try to connect smart audio. All right, so now if we keep the IPEX port up, the way we would connect this to the flight controller, we have the ground which will be the ground pad that's coming in from here, which is the minus on the flight controller in this area. Then five volt, which would be the positive. And make sure you take note that this is bridged to five volts so you don't fry this thing right out of the box. And then we have RX, which is where the smart audio would go. And the smart audio would be connected to the TX3 pad right there up in the top. And then on the bottom, we have the video signal, which will be coming out from the V, which is video. And then you're good to go. And then you should be totally fine here. You might have to do a little bit of programming in the beta flight configurator. But other than that, it should be pretty smooth sailing. Hopefully this helps someone out there. And it seems like a really nice choice for its price. I mean, they're giving you quite a lot of things here. And again, this is not meant for super three inch quadcopters. Uh, so you'd have to, you know, make sure you take note of what you're going to be putting this on. Uh, since it's, um, you know, they're even stating don't go over 90 millimeter quads, which dictates the motor size. So you can put, you know, like 11 XX, which is 1103, 1106 motors and anything below that, like 0805, I think anything just below the 11 XX mark and you should be fine. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have a link to this down below. It goes for 50 bucks, which is really nice. Uh, and again, longevity, I won't be able to test that. That'll come back to the community in the comments down below. And well, that's it guys. I'll have it linked down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.